Hello, my name is AJ Goldsby. I'm a life master from Pensacola, Florida, and I wanted to bring you another video in my series of videos on the World Championship Games. I'm doing a video on every single one of the World Championship Games. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the games, especially the drawn ones. I did want to spend more time on the decisive games, but this game here was a draw, and um, I'm going to try to make it as brief as possible while still trying to cover the more important points. But anyway, this is game seven. Uh, previously in the odd games, Carlson had been white, but uh, it's a 12-game match, and for whatever reason, the same thing happened in the Gelfand Anon match in the previous World Five World Championship match two years ago when Anon played Gelfand. Um, they switched colors. They put you know one through six, and then there was a turnabout of the colors. So uh, in, in game six, I believe, uh, Carlson was white, and now in game seven, Anand is white, so they switch colors. Um, but I don't know why they do that. That's just the format of the match. I guess it's you know just to, to change things up a little bit, maybe to uh, take away from someone who maybe if they start off the match, started off with having white, they don't get to keep the same colors throughout the end of the match. But for whatever reason, they change colors. Now, in game two, I believe, um, Carlson played the uh, Carol Khan, and that was a relatively quiet draw. But in games four and six, uh, Carlson played the Berlin defense. And in those two games, in the game uh, four, uh, Carlson actually got a r rather large edge, won a pawn, but wasn't able to bring it all the way home. And in game six, uh, it was, should have been a quiet draw, but uh, Anand basically just misplayed the position in a relatively quiet position and somehow managed to lose even though he should not have lost. So in this game, we're going to go ahead and take a look at it. Anyway, this is game number seven of the five World Championship match played in Chennai, India of November 2013, and Viswanathan Anand is white and Magnus Carlsen is black. Starts off E4, E5, Knight of three, Knight C6, Bishop B5, Knight F6. Of course, this entire match, other than the one Karo Khan, uh, Carlson has been playing almost E5 exclusively. Um, and especially in, in, when he plays E5, he's been sticking to the Berlin defense. Now, he does know other lines uh, against the king pawn, the double king pawn openings. And I can show you a few games in the database where he's played other things. But apparently, A, the Berlin defense is one of his favorite lines. And that's number one. And number two... He seems to have prepared this particular opening specifically for this world championship match, and I believe he was not willing to deviate too much from that. Apparently, he was going to rely heavily on the Berlin defense for being his his primary weapon against the uh, the double king pawn in the right, at least in the in the Spanish game. So anyway, now uh, non plays d3. Now in one game he played the main line. The main line just very quickly uh, goes backing up here uh, the main line rather than d3 is white castles and that's the main line there and then of course knight takes e4 d4 knight d6 bishop takes c6 d takes c6 d takes e5 knight f5 queen takes d8 check king takes d8 and now i believe uh, anon played h3 that was the uh, first couple you know at least the first game that they played the uh, the uh, berlin defense which was i believe was game four and it was also in game six, again, Carlson played the Berlin defense. However, in that game, as in this game, uh, Anand responded with D3. He basically wanted to bypass the main line of the Berlin defense. The D3 has the drawback of being um, rather quiet and somewhat slower, but also it keeps the game alive and there's less exchanges. Black plays bishop c5. That's supposed to be one of the most active variations for black to play. Bishop takes c6. Now, in a previous game, uh, game six, the one which Anand lost, um, it, it was just the last game. Um, in game six, Carlson, uh, rather Anand, did not play bishop takes c6. He played a completely different line. So here, you know, Anand is obviously looking to, ch you know, to change things up. In that game, uh, Anand castled first, kept the bishops on the board and played bishop to g5. They exchanged light squared bishops on b3. You can see the previous video for that opening. But here Anand apparently is looking to, to swap things around a little bit to change things up. So here he plays bishop takes c6. d takes c6, that's the main line. Knight b2, bishop g4, h3, 
bishop h5, knight f1. All these are standard you know, ideas in the Ray Lopez or the Spanish game. Knight d7. That's kind of an interesting move there. That's not necessarily main line. Um, you know, that's, uh, I'm not sure. Well, I could look at the openings book. Actually, the opening of the book doesn't delve into this too much. I have a DVD on the uh, Spanish game, especially on the Berlin, and I could probably dig that out and research that a little bit and tell you exactly what the main line is here. But already they're pretty much out of book, at least out of the, the power book. So anyway, knight f1, knight d7. That's just an idea there. He's retreating the, the knights, probably to play f6 to keep his king pawn protected. Knight g3, bishop takes f3, queen takes f3, g6. It kind of weakens the dark squares, but the idea there is mainly to keep that knight, especially the knight, but also the knight and the queen, white queen out of the f5 square. I t also, too, I think what I want to do here is let's go ahead and fire up Fritz 13. We'll get Fritz loaded here really quickly. There you can see that I'm running Fritz 13. I did that so you'd be able to actually see that I'm running Fritz 13 in the background. Now I'll move that out of your screen. But anyway, and I'll just tell you what the, what the engine's saying. The engine's giving a very slight plus to white, and although I found out rather many times uh, this is not my observation too i've corresponded with a few other titled players and they agree with me that sometimes fritz t 13 is much too optimistic optimistic in its overall evaluations that really probably a more dependable program for uh, 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 evaluations would probably be something like houdini or even deep shredder which are both more conservative in their overall evaluation sometimes fritz gives itself a huge advantage and, um, you know, it's maybe not necessarily justified by the actual position on the board. Or at least it's not something a master might agree with. You know, Fritz will say it's up three quarters or a pawn up. And, you know, White says, uh, you know, you look at the position and you just don't see it there for White. But anyway, G6, that's, again, that's, you know, the idea there is to keep the uh, the knight and the queen out of the F5 square. Uh, the, the, believe it or not, that's the suge first suggestion, too, of the engine. Apparently that, that move is more or less forced. Uh, White could get a really big advantage if his knight got to the f5 square. So anyway, g6, bishop to e3. There, Fritz 13 is recommending simply castling, but Anon plays bishop e3. I'm not sure why he did that. He's down two points at this point in the match. He had just lost game five and game six back to back. Maybe he's just trying to regain his composure here. Maybe his goal wasn't to come back and try to win a game. Uh, you know, it's such a short match. I think you have to try to win every time with white. But maybe he's having lost two games back to back, he's simply trying to get his feet back under him and stabilize his match position and, and draw a game, showing that he doesn't necessarily have to lose every single time. But anyway, bishop e3, that's kind of exchanging down. Uh, castling is, is look like the logical indicated move to me, and also the engine agrees with that. Or white could maybe even play bishop d2 and go for castling queenside, try to make the position really wild. But um, anyway, bishop e3, bishop e7. Both sides castle queenside. White castles queenside, as does black on move 12. And now we have uh, 92. I'm not sure what the... Here the engine, Fritz 13, calls this pretty much level and recommends king b1. Again, that looks like a good move to keep the game alive. And that might be what I want to play. 92, eh, I'm not sure what the idea there is. Um, maybe just to transfer the knight out of the way. Maybe he's going to exchange off the bishops and go for f4. I'm not really sure. But anyway, rhe8. King b1, b6, h4, king b7, 16, h5. There, here the machine is recommending bishop g5. I've got to really agree with that. If white wants to go all out for a win here, he has to keep material on the board. So really the, the machines and several other engines I tested too also like bishop g5 for white at this point. So I think if white is going to play for a win, uh, then he has to play bishop g5 here, uh, mainly just to keep material on the board. But um, for whatever reason, Anand bypasses bishop g5 here. Uh, maybe, again, maybe he wasn't trying to win. Maybe after two consecutive losses, he just wanted to, you know, not show that he wasn't going to lose another game. But obviously, to lose a third game in a row would have been terribly disastrous. But anyway, h5, bishop takes e3, queen takes e3, knight c5 on move 17, 18, h takes g6, h takes g6. Already now here, I mean, if the players wanted to, they could have 
shook hands and agreed to a draw here. It's probably not in Anand's interest. He needs to press on a little bit, being two points down in the match. He at least needs to probe Black a little bit more and see if something doesn't pop up because sometimes you never know when your opponent's going to make a mistake. G3, A5. That's obviously designed to prevent B4 from White from kicking this knight here off this square, but I don't really think that White was going to play B4 anyway. Um, so, you know... Other than that, I really don't see a reason for playing a5 there. It may be other than grabbing space on the queen side. Uh, the computer move there is rook a, Fritz 13 is recommending rook h8. So a5, you could probably give that exclamation questioning. It's not terrible. Uh, you know, it's a it's a fairly reasonable move, but uh, you know, it really wasn't necessary. Rook h7, rook h8, r d h1, rook takes h7, rook takes h7. The queen goes to f6. That's to challenge the file of the very next move with rook h8. If white could play, take two moves here and play queen f1, queen h, queen f3 rather than queen h1 or somehow get his queen over to h1 or h2 and totally dominate the only open file, he might have a chance here of winning. But, um, you know, that's, you know, that takes two moves. That's just not possible. Obviously, queen f3 would just drop the queen in the current position to queen takes queen. But I'm just saying ideas. Sometimes you have to try to you know, come up with ideas, you know, because sometimes that leads to thing. White maybe would like to play, you know, if his if his F pawn wasn't hanging, if he had a, you know, some other piece on the board like a knight on D1, he could consider queen H6. Again, the idea being to dominate the only open file, but here queen H6 is unplayable because of queen takes F2. So um, the fact is that, you know, the that white cannot dominate the, the only remaining open file means that, you know, basically there's not going to be much advantage left for anyone. F4, rook h8, rook takes h8, queen takes h8, f takes e5, queen takes e5, queen f3, f5. Now, I would not have played f5 there. Um, I would have played f6, but uh, apparently f5 is the indicated move, according to Fritz 13. Maybe f6 would be a little too passive. Maybe that would encourage white to continue to try to play for a win. Maybe f5 is the indicated move because that's what the machine seems to like. Uh, e takes f5, g takes f5, c3. Now, obviously, you know, there's there's a big-time threat there now. Um, why couldn't he have played e takes f5? Oh, there's a little trick here in the position. I remember seeing this during the game. A lot of backing up here just a little bit. White played... Uh, Let's see. Well, here it, here D4 doesn't work, I should explain. Here for white, uh, 26 D4 doesn't work simply because queen takes E4 and the white queen is hanging. So anyway, queen F3. And again, D4 doesn't work as long as white has queen F4. Now after F5, E takes F5, E takes F5. A lot of players, you know, tried to ask me. One one player even wrote me an email. Apparently he didn't have an engine or he didn't turn it on. But he said, why not D4 forking the... Uh, the um, black queen and and i mean the yeah the black queen and a knight but black has a nice little trick here it's just simply knight e4 and now now if white you know if he takes the queen then i can respond with check here and then get the queen right back so it's a fairly simple tactic but if you can't see it then you know it might be a question of why not why not make the fork here i mean why not just go ahead that looks like a fork is a fork i mean usually forking would win two pieces but the, obviously there were tactics in the position and that is why uh, black, white could not play d4 there. But anyway, if d4, just simply knight e4. And if white wants to take the, the queen, which actually looks bad, because that e-pawn might become undefended and become a target, then knight here check and knight takes queen, recaptures the queen. And all, the only thing that's happened is white has been left with a weakened e-pawn. So anyway, knight e6. Obviously, sooner or later, he's going to have to worry about the fork. King c2. Knight g5. Queen f2. Knight e6, queen f3, knight f5, queen f2, knight e6. So there they decided to take a draw by repetition of position. And here I think it was fully justified. Queen and knight for both sides. Neither side has any real hope of winning that. And Fritz, even Fritz and all the other engines that I checked, I checked with a couple of other engines like Houdini. They all analyze this position as 0.00, 0, 0, 0, 0, meaning neither side has any appreciable advantage. That pretty much does it. That's only about 15 minutes, and that's really all there. This wasn't much of a game. 
Um, I, I'd have to say after two consecutive decisive games by Carlson to, to ask the players to play all out every single game is both unrealistic and just not possible. I mean, you know, I think Hiranon needed to kind of get his feet back under him and regain his confidence and regain his composure and maybe just make one draw just to show that he it couldn't lose. In such a short match, some might argue, well, that's a, a terrible waste of the white pieces. But at the same time, you know, psychology is psychology. And sometimes if you've lost a couple straight to the same opponent, then you're getting to think, well, this person's always going to beat me. And it might be good, psychologically speaking, for one side to just simply, you know, regain their footing and and uh, make a draw just to prove that you know they don't have to lose every single game. That does it for my coverage of this game. This, again, was game number seven. Uh, it was a draw in 32 moves, and um, that's it for this particular game. And I hope you enjoyed the video, watching the video. Thank you for watching my video. And if you enjoy my webpage uh, efforts and my bi videos, I hope you support that. Consider supporting them if you can. And go to the PayPal website. That's www.paypal.com. And to make a contribution, and my email is lifemasteraj at yahoo.com. That's who you make the contribution to. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you'll watch all my videos on this uh, series. And uh, thank you for watching, and have a nice day.